Can you hear me well? I can hear you. Yes. How's it going? I'm okay. How are you? I'm doing well. Just let me check. I'm using my right microphone. Yeah. Um. So it looks like you're a busy man. Uh, well, I don't consider it busy. I enjoy what I do. So, I, yeah. I mean, I play pickleball. I was playing baseball yesterday morning. Um, nice. So... I don't I don't consider what I do work. I love what I do. I see. Cool. What whereabouts do you live, Phil? Uh well I'm a uh, Winnipeg and Toronto. I'm uh, flying back and forth. I have some uh, I I'm running some company in Toronto and I have my families in Winnipeg and uh, have some businesses in Winnipeg as well. Oh I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> well I have uh, I have sure family it's... in Winnipeg. So. <laughs> That's my choice, yeah. Okay. Everything yeah. we do is because we choose the roof, right? Yeah. Um, it's oh, constant yeah. rising back and forth between my family and uh, about Winnipeg and, yeah. But that's a whole other conversation. Yeah. So were you uh, born in Winnipeg? You were brought up in oh. Winnipeg? No? No, no, no. You probably see my uh, my accent. I, I was born in the Soviet Union, actually. Okay. Yeah, I was born in the Soviet Union, and I moved to Israel. I lived in Israel for a while, and then I moved to Canada about 20 years ago. Okay. All right. Yeah, so um, anyway, so uh, I, I'm I'm kind of following you, listening to your TikToks, and it's uh, uh, interesting. And uh, um, uh, we just, uh, at some point, Point of a year ago, so we decided to um, start up our own uh, bookkeeping company. And um, later, I heard your on TikTok that it's actually a good idea. Um, and uh, I understand the the issue with uh, bookkeeping. Uh, first of all, uh, labor, so they could they can't find good uh, bookkeepers, and uh, also the existing bookkeepers, bookkeeping companies, they aging and um, they kind of, there is no, no much, no, not so many young people entering this industry. So it looks like a good, was good opportunity. And uh, we have a couple of our businesses uh, thought maybe just to keep it alive uh, to, to, as a startup, we use uh, uh, this bookkeeping uh, company for ourselves. Um, but overall, um, um, I have a little bit different approach. Uh, I'm me myself. I'm engineer, so I have engineering approach, and I also uh, uh, kind of my specialties. Uh, I'm uh, uh, I'm good in uh, uh, developing some new procedures and policies, and uh, um, like thinking out of box uh, from in the business. So uh, we pretty much resolve the issue with labor. Um, and uh, we, uh, the way we resolve it is, uh, I'm working with uh, people from Philippines for a very long time and in different uh, capacities. And uh, I have nothing but good uh, about these guys as long as you know how to manage them. And uh, that was my approach with this company uh, to use uh, legwork labor uh, from Philippines and just uh, uh, like team leads and the operations uh, manager, a local Canadian. That's okay. what that's my approach, okay. and um, yeah, so I I can scale this business like I can have like ten new bookkeepers per month easily or more, and uh, all of them they actually overqualified. Usually, what I'm hiring I'm hiring uh, accountants from Philippines, not just bookkeepers. So they all with uh, a degree, have sometimes master's degree, sometimes bachelor degree, and. Uh, the way we structure the payment, they want to work for us, they eager to work. Uh, we usually pay more than they asking. And uh, we, um, yeah, we kind of we have no problem at all. And um, uh, in Philippines, it's a, I'm not sure you, I'm not sure you how much you know about Philippines. It's a, pitch, we hire a lot of social media managers in the Philippines. We hire about 10 a month. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I have I have people from Philippines working for me for different companies as the drafters, engineers, um, personal assistants, uh, project coordinators. So I have probably right now across all companies probably like a couple dozen people from Philippines. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I have 
I think it's a good idea. And then overall, uh, we enjoy, we also um, uh, structure it as a, a modern, um, a had mo modern approach for bookkeeping with all possible uh, software products to um, um, reduce labor, uh, like manual labor to do as much as possible to automate the processes. Um, so that's what my um, kind of engineering brain uh, was about uh, how to reduce uh, labor, not uh, increase labor, even even if it's not inexpensive labor. So uh, the company is up and running for probably three, four months now. Um, we have a person who is an operator, of, uh, um, she's uh, local in Canada, and um, she's know what she's doing and uh, she wants to work for us. We even uh, offered her some shares in the company to uh, make her a little bit hooked up and then make it more interesting for her. Um, we also have in Canada a person uh, who's uh, just started like this month's uh, um, social media and um, onboarding. So we think uh, uh, people in Canada, they want to hear Canadian and Canadian uh, voice uh, without the accent uh, in the beginning when they're signing up, so when they're actually onboarding uh, companies. So that's the reason we want to have some somebody local. Okay. Uh, and so then we what have, would you uh, say is your biggest challenge right now? Clients. So clients, we, okay. Yeah, we can figure out a good way of acquire clients. So that's what I was uh, hoping that if you would be interested, because I understand you were willing to invest in um, uh, bookkeeping companies. We don't really need money, but uh, we definitely will, uh, would like to have somebody as a potentially partner or any other um, a way of uh, doing business together um, just to see how we can uh, bring, part, bring, bring customers. Okay. And I know that as soon as people, is, I know that people are not, not excited about their local like, existing bookkeepers. Um, so it's, it's just a matter of approaching the right uh, people, I guess. That's all it is. Because uh, overall, I have no problem, no doubt that we'll we'll provide good service. Okay. Um, we also. So I what also... would you say is your differentiation from other services? So and you can share all... a screen if you want to share your website or sharing information. Yeah, yeah, I can do that. Just give me a sec. Um... Yeah, basically, um, from day one, I told my people that uh, I don't want to build mediocre company. I want this company to be uh, good. Uh, how am I showing him? Share of screen. Sure. So can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, so um, basically, uh, it's just a generic website, nothing really special about website. Um, uh, we have some AI videos here uh, to kind of just kind of show people what we have. Uh, we also have some uh, um, uh, posts going. Uh, I know that it's good for social media to have some uh, um, ongoing uh, uh, kind of postings. So basically, uh, the difference is, uh, uh, first of all, we're using all possible software products to automate processes, which is ultimately should be good for clients. Also, uh, we want to provide good service. So, um, and uh, for good service, I have two two things. First of all, we uh, we have so we called Abigail Hub. I hope it will open. Um, so. This about your hub is, uh, I know that the bookkeepers, usually when you have an in-house bookkeeper, uh, they uh, also are personal assistants and not just, not only bookkeepers. So I was thinking how we can uh, uh, make uh, us also as a personal assistants. And I thought maybe it makes sense to have some kind of hub that people uh, log in and then from this, like a portal and from this portal, they can uh, approach and then they get whatever they want. If they want to have yeah, up, uh, access QuickBooks or Dex or Telpay or Pluto, um, also have some calendar with uh, some maybe dates, uh, important dates like Thursdays um, or um, uh, start holidays, address book, uh, 
and uh, but also we we would like to organize files for our customers um since we still have a, a relatively inexpensive labor um we want to organize uh, folders for our customers so if you want to see your ARAP reports then you can access uh, from this hub your uh, AI reports uh, on, on a weekly basis that will be uploaded there. So you don't need to ask your bookkeeper, it's already there. Basically, the idea is to get uh, to understand what people need and then give them even before they ask us to, to give it. So if they want to see some payroll information or some uh, WCB, WCIB information or anything else, um, what, whatever whatever people potentially need or access to bank or credit cards uh, information. So we'll provide them even before they ask in us. And uh, uh, also we would like to have a feedback, uh, like uh, uh, have on on monthly basis uh, to get people uh, give us some feedback. And then it's also part of APIs, how we pay our bookkeepers. Uh, the, the way we structure compensation for bookkeepers is they have a base salary and they also have a monthly bonus if they uh, exceed our expectations. And the KPIs, if clients happy, not happy. And so that will, will give us some indication how our bookkeepers doing so ultimately we want to provide better service um, um and then personal approach so all our, all our bookkeepers they have uh, um, um phone numbers and they, they can call them you can email them so even if they out of philippines they all always have to have good english um, and um, we have a voice over internet phone, so we always can connect uh, or any uh, Teams or Zoom meetings. So it should be a seamless conversation if needed. Um, but also we see this bookkeeping uh, business as a core, as a beginning. And then uh, when we have a client base, we want to grow into some additional services. Uh, like we're going to ask our people, uh, customers, if they need HR services, if they need the uh, business development services, if they need M&A. So whatever they need around that same uh, office, uh, whatever in office they potentially need, uh, using the same same approach, uh, using uh, people from Philippines, uh, just to grow uh, horizontally, not only vertical. Okay. So that that's the big picture. Um, How long have you been working on this business? Well, as like I said, we we go live about four months ago, and okay. uh, overall we started probably like December or something. Uh, we incorporated in December, I think. December. Okay. Yeah. Wow. The bookkeeping that we want to start, we started about twelve years ago. We started promotion twelve years ago. We don't launch until March of 27. Okay. Okay. So what what's the most important part, most important factor of any business? What would you to say it is? To, to give people what they need. Uh, so most, most business owners don't know what they need, right? Well, Ultimately, they do know what they need. Uh, basically, uh, we need to we need to make their life easier because I have my own businesses and I know that what I'm struggling with. I know where the problem is, uh, ex uh, for example, bookkeeping. So the quality of bookkeepers is not there, and um, people because always because most of them it. are self-taught. Exactly. There is not, it's not regulated. Uh, it's unregulated uh, industry. And by the way, our bookkeepers, they all certified. We use, we, even when we hire from Philippines, we, before they start working, we're asking them to get certification, uh, QuickBooks or something. Uh, um, so they all certified bookkeepers. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, good quality service um, make their life easier, seamless, so they um, to, as less as possible to interact while they receive all information they need and on timely manner. Um, I'm fighting for them to give me um, ARAP reports on, on a weekly basis or PNL reports on a weekly basis, not on a monthly basis. But uh, most of the most of the bookkeeping companies, they don't even do that at all. Uh, also, um, our slogan, it's a, a pro, uh, we, we want to be proactive. 
Okay, and um, uh, basically, no bookkeeping companies today are proactive. And uh, yeah, it's our slogan is uh, proactive excellence in bookkeeping. Uh, all every, every single bookkeeping company today, an accounting company, they're answering your questions. They're never offering you um, uh, upfront advice. We want that's Agreed. what we want to change. We want we want to be proactive. If we are people trained to watch and if this is something is irregular, we can recommend. We don't we definitely don't want to do anything, but we can at least recommend. Okay, uh, this is something that's happening. We really recommend to take take care of it or, or pay attention to that. So uh, this is another th big, big thing that uh, uh, different uh, us from others because then being proactive in bookkeeping and accounting, which is uh, unusual. Mm -hmm. But you already know the results of what you just said, right? A results in what, what do you mean? Well, you already know the results of your slogan. Yes. Right? And you already said you don't have enough customers. Yes. So that's the result today. Correct. Right? So you have four months, which is not a long time. Yeah. But that's an indication of what you're going to get for the next four months and the next four years. Yeah, yeah. It's not like we don't have customers. We just don't have enough customers. We have right now probably around a dozen uh, customers. Okay. When we launch a company, we want so many customers that we can only take 10 or 20 percent. That's that's what a true launch looks like. Mm -hmm. Right. You build up so much credibility, so much trust. That you have all these clients coming to you and you pick the, you know, the 10 percent, the top 10 percent of the clients. Yeah. OK. Ideally. Yes. Well, no, not ideally. That's what you design. Okay. And what you design is what you get. Okay, okay, makes sense. If you design the Empire State Building, you don't get you know a, a one bedroom bungalow house. I understand. You designed an Empire State Building. That's what you're building. That's what you're going to get. Yeah. Right? That's what a business looks like. How much do you have invested in this business so far? About fifty k. Fifty k. Okay. Um. And and do you have packages available or how how are you pricing? Yes, definitely we have packages available. Yes. Okay. Uh, what are the packages? Well, I'm not in operations, so I I don't have it a, a handy. But it's okay. definitely I know it's packages. I know uh, our people develop pretty sophisticated uh, uh, structure of how to price out. Um, uh to how to figure out the uh, the time also um this person who is working for us uh, uh as a operations manager she she knows bookkeeping um she's she's young she's like 32 three years old but she's uh she already had experience uh, in bookkeeping her business and um, she 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 can figure out how much time roughly it will take uh, to manage the books uh so we have Different, different packages and uh, definitely different approaches for different people. And uh, I, I understand this uh, theory of having middle, uh, have three three prices and then the, the middle price wins and then the, you make, make most money on it. Okay. But you have no idea what the range is in, in the prices. Are you above industry standards? No. Uh, about no. the same as industry standards? We, we actually aiming given below, like we okay. like I'm, I'm so even... let's say around 300, 500, 1, 1,500 thereabouts. Well, it depends on the company. We have a we have a one client uh, with uh, three thousand dollars a month, another client forty two hundred dollars a month, and we have clients with two hundred fifty dollars a month. It depends on the client. It depends on number of transactions, and uh, on uh, yeah on how much time we need to spend on them. Okay. Yeah, it's it's a uh, but we technically we can offer. I know that for sure we like uh, we will be more efficient than others. I, I have no doubt, and then we easily can uh, afford giving people a uh, uh, let's say twenty percent discount from what they pay today um, in the in the first year, and uh, uh, also we we offering our clients to. Um, 
give us uh, leads on their friends. And then if they bring friends, they will give, uh, let's say, get one month free. So then uh, we attract them uh, with trying to uh, kind of bring additional clients, just uh, friends bring bring their friends. And then in the meantime, they're saving money on their monthly pay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, I don't I don't know how deep you you're you're throwing some huge red flags. Um and I don't know I want to be respectful and not jump on these red flags every time you bring them up, but these are pretty major red flags. So let's let's keep moving forward. Um how do you see us working together if at all? Um, I don't know. It depends uh, what you're looking for. Uh, basically, I'm looking for right now uh, for the for a potential maybe partner. And uh, uh, the only thing, as I said, only thing I need is a, a partner who can potentially bring customers. Okay. Uh, that's what we're lacking right now. Uh, okay. And what would that look like? What would that look like in terms of partnerships? Uh, a percentage. 20%, 25%. Okay. Um, because we can scale this business and uh, we have no ceiling. So I, I told my people right away when we are always hiring people, I said, uh, if we can get 1,000 clients, we'll get 1,000 clients. We're going to grow as far as we can. We have uh, we can scale because we resolve the issue with uh, um, labor. And uh, it's all it just and also since we um uh virtual working remotely, we have no issue with geography. We can we can do across Canada and even if we want, we can go US as well. Right. So we have we have no ceiling. It's not like I want to take 150 customers and sleep well. Okay. But is labor the biggest issue? Well, I know in the bookkeeping industry it is an issue. Um, it's a, it's issue to find a labor and it's huge, huge issue to find a good labor. Uh, but can we agree that the biggest issue is finding clients? Well, it is our issue today. Yes. Well, it's most companies issues, whether you're in the construction industry, the hotel industry, the manufacturing industry, uh, the HVAC industry, all industries, the biggest issue today is finding profitable clients, right? I agree. Yeah. I agree. Uh, I think bookkeeping is slightly different. Uh, if you like, basically, I know why we have this problem is because we have no reputation. So we just, uh, uh, we've been considering maybe buying a book of uh, business. Uh, it's just uh, we need to figure out how to actually make sure the clients come to us after we buy the book. So it's uh, not that straightforward because uh, we cannot force clients to join us. Um, but it's I, I think if we, if we would have an, a, a reputation, it would be easier. I know that uh, in bookkeeping, if you provide good service, it's uh, it will it, it will start. We just need this uh, pretty much first kick. That's what we need. The first. Uh, 50 clients. That's what we need. Okay. Have you done any marketing at all? Uh, we just started. That's what I said. We, we hired a person uh, to start working on the marketing uh, uh, to improve our website and to do uh, uh, social media marketing. We already have some uh, some ad, ads on uh, uh, Facebook, on TikTok, on uh, LinkedIn. Uh, just just starting like last two three weeks. Okay. Um, yeah, this this is a difficult conversation. Um, take time. Take your time. Don't rush. Well, no, it's not take my time. I'm not I'm not struggling to choose words. I'm getting too many words that 
that will potentially offend you. And that's not my goal. Okay. It's not my goal. You know because if I, I believe, don't know what I'm doing wrong, I will never learn. I believe you're going in the wrong direction. Okay. Okay. You're not focusing on, on what's important. Uh, yes, labor is important. But before you can focus on labor, you got to solve the client problem, right? You got to have a conveyor belt of clients delivered to you on a regular basis, right? Yeah. And these clients have to have a lot of trust in you, yeah. right? And the biggest factor, the question that I asked before, the biggest, the most important factor of any business is trust, right? Clients have to trust you. Your system, your whole system, all your employees, if you have 1,500 employees, their main job is to build trust with future potential clients, right? The yeah. janitor, his biggest job is to build trust with future potential clients, right? Yeah. Um, and th this is where most, most companies struggle. They figure, I'll, you know, if I build it, they will come. If I build a website, I'll get bombarded with business. It doesn't happen. It doesn't happen. Doing ads on you know a Google or, or Facebook or everything else, it's just gonna blow your budget. Okay? Just gonna blow your brains out. Because that's what everybody's trying to do. If it was 10 years ago, yeah, you, there was room uh, on pay-per-click campaigns, but then the economy starts turning around, everybody turns to pay-per-click. Now it's just driving up the price and nobody's getting anything, right? So pay-per-click, if it works, it gives you a poor client because there's no trust, right? The client knows they paid on an ad, right? On the other hand, uh, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, oops. The reason why I invest so much time and energy on um, on TikTok and social media is because I'm building trust with future potential clients that I'm going to need three to five years down the road. Okay. Yeah. The reason why we started the bookkeeping company 12 years ago, or we started designing and building credibility in that company, and we're building trust over the years, and we don't launch until March of 27, is because I know we're not ready to launch. We don't have uh, you know over 100,000 followers following that brand, right? So every two weeks, like this video here has 9.4 million views. Every two weeks, I get 20 million views on my video. Actually, sorry, every seven to 10 days, I get 20 million views, mainly from business owners or people who want to start businesses. Okay? Yep. And these are all future potential clients for the bookkeeping business and yep. other businesses that I'm creating. I own shares in 19 different companies. Okay? But the leads that we get from these videos... They already know who I am. They already know my personality. They know that I've been around forever. They know everything about me. I share everything. I share all my mistakes, all my failures, all my successes. I share everything. There's no guesswork, right? So a lead that comes here is already built with trust, right? A lead yeah. coming in from pay-per-click campaigns. This is why I don't do pay-per-click campaigns. I know I still have to build the trust. Right. And it's very expensive for doing pay per click campaigns. Does that make sense? Absolutely. Okay. So I'll and leave I, that I, I told you, like, that's not a problem. We don't have a reputation. Right. So you need to rent a reputation until you develop a reputation over the next three to five years. Yeah. That's right. what we need first kick. We need first a uh, uh, bunch of people. That's why one of our incentive programs is have people to bring their friends. So when they happy, when they have trust in us, then they're going to uh, help us to bring more business to their friends while they're okay. saving money. Okay, but you understand that's a three to five year project. Yeah. Okay, so what do you do in the meantime? Right? 
So, and this is what, this is why I keep saying, you know, if you're thinking of launching a business within the next 10 years, you better start organic marketing today. So right now, what you're trying to do is you've already, you're trying to fly an airplane, but you haven't built it yet. So you're trying to build an airplane and fly it at the same time. It's very difficult what you're trying to do. Okay. Okay. So, and you're not using leverage tools. So you're doing everything the hardest way possible. Well, okay, could be. We've helped design over a thousand companies to win over the 20 million revenue mark in our 40 year career. So we've done this many times. So I don't envy what you're trying to do because you're trying to push a boulder uphill instead of pushing the same boulder downhill. You're doing it the hardest way possible. Okay. So I would redesign your company. I would start with branding and differentiation to create an unfair advantage. I don't see an unfair advantage right now. And what you're saying is you want to deliver service and everybody says that. Everyone says that. Go to any bookkeeping, any painter, any, any kitchen installer. They always talk about over delivering on service. It's bullshit. Nobody does. Right? Because eventually they forget what they promised themselves. Very quickly they forget. All right? Then they become average. Then they become below average. Then they go bankrupt. 96% of companies go bankrupt because yeah. they don't have the unfair advantage. Okay. So I'm proposing that you step back a couple of steps before you try and step forward. Okay. Um, are you open to a new company name? Absolutely. Okay. Um, and I understand you can take clients from all over Canada. Exactly. But I would start, well, first of all, before I finish that statement, there's two, there's two types of trust. There's online trust and there's real world trust. Okay. Um, and the way we create real world trust combined with online trust is with truck wraps. Truck wraps with wow, wow factor. Let me share the screen again. Sorry, too much stuff open here. Yeah, I can see it. Okay. This is a, a vehicle for wowledgerlion.com. Um, it has a loudspeaker uh, that will be moved underneath the vehicle. And to give you an example, the reason why we like th this system, we, we have been testing a system like this for a wowonedayroof.com. And when we put a vehicle, when we hire... Uh, when we hire retirees in two to four hour shifts, in eight hours, we get between 14 and 20 leads per day. These vehicles travel up and down major highways. They have a speaker system. They have Trump's voice doing traffic trivia and doing jokes and engaging with the traffic around them, right? We become very noticeable on the street. In fact, we want to be pulled over by the police at least once a week. <laughs> okay. Because the police are going to think, you know, the driver is paying attention to what he's saying and not paying attention to driving. No, it's a pre recorded message. Even though, you know, the driver or the Trump's voice is saying, you know, the gray Audi five cars behind me, answer this question. If you answer it correctly, here's my phone number. Here's the office number. If you answer it correctly, you've got dinner for two. Okay. On us. So it re-engages and start and gets people to look, where's the gray out he's talking about? So it sounds like a live a live person talking. So anyways, yeah. 
Um, 16, uh, 14 to 20 leads per day. The average uh, sale is $16,000. Okay. So that's what I would propose you do. And I would propose you pick an area uh, and slowly grow out from that area because online marketing falls flat unless they know you are part of their community. Okay. All these ads you're going to pay for, you know, over time, you're going to pay a million dollars in marketing. It's going to fall flat because you're not part of the Winnipeg community or the GTA community. They have to see that truck. And a lot of times when they see the truck, then they see it again tomorrow morning. They think, oh, it's another truck. Oh, and another truck, right? They keep thinking, oh, this is a large company. No, it's the same truck they see over and over again, right? Then they think, oh, this is a large company, right? And they keep saying, you know, I keep seeing your trucks all over the place. No, you keep seeing the same truck because we go up and down the same major highway, right? Highway 401 has 400,000 vehicles per day. Tell me how you can get in front of 400,000 or 300,000 or 200,000 people on a daily basis, right? To create the wow factor, right? Are you with me? Yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Okay. So they see the truck. Then they see the online stuff or they see the online stuff. Then they see the truck. Hey, I know those people, right? Now you're part of the community. Then they see the truck parked at the little league game, the church, the supermarket, you know, everywhere that they're at. And they say, well, they're part of my community. I want to support my community. And, and then they start making phone calls. But they need to see it at least 20 times before they make the call. Right. But when they see the truck, then they see the online stuff, then they see videos and they see, a, you know, Instagram, Facebook and everywhere else. Now it makes sense. That's how you build trust. So I would propose that you and I become partners in wowledgerlion.com. Any leads that come in from the other dealers, you service them as a subcontractor. You pay the dealers a, a percentage, and the sub that we have right now pays 30%. Um, and we refer all the future business to you. Okay. What are your thoughts? Um, I guess we could discuss it. Okay. Uh, do you have partners in this business? Uh, yes, my son. And uh, as I said, we we want to bring uh, as a ten percent partner and uh, the person who does operation today. Okay. Um, give me a second. Our, our goal is to have about a thousand dealers across North America. We've done this for a moving company. And uh, uh, almost 20 years ago, a moving company approached me and said, Leo, can you help us grow our moving company? And I said, sure. But how do you want me to help you grow? Do you want to you know, buy more trucks, hire more people to do more physical moves? Or do you just want to make you know, a percentage off the top? And that's how we created the index sites, okay? So index sites is, is now imagine a thousand other bookkeepers all working towards the same thing, all contributing to the website, cre uh, creating a very dominant website, like an Amazon type website. And when someone type, types in best bookkeepers of Winnipeg, you show up on page one, two, and three, okay? So that type of authority um, is going to be the best way to gain market share. So let's end the meeting here. Think about what I've 
said, I'm going to share this video with you. Sit down with your partners, watch the video. And if it makes sense, let's have another conversation and take this conversation to the next level. So you have my email address, right? Yeah, I'll send you the recording on your email. And can you also outline uh, what you just uh, said, uh, the way of partnership and then a little bit, maybe a little bit more details uh, just so I can uh, wrap my head around it? Um, That's what, what all your proposal is. Yeah. Well, see, you would, you would, you would, we would give you the territory of Winnipeg. Any leads that come in for the Winnipeg area or even Manitoba, if you can handle Manitoba, uh, we will give you Manitoba as, as long as I know you're going to grow and handle Manitoba. But if a lead comes in from Manitoba, I know that you're going to need to handle those leads. Okay. And when I say handle those leads, I'm not talking about, you know, handle them remotely. I want your supervisors to see the clients sit down for lunch with them at least once a quarter. Monthly would be ideal for a coffee or something, but you know, lunch or coffee at least quarterly because we need to build relationships because we need to ask, right? And, and your supervisors need to sit down with the employees and say, hey, what's going on on the job site? What's going on within the company? We, need, we can't just take the owner's word for it. We need to talk to the wife. We need to talk to this, you know, their their employees, their key employees, and even their clients to say, "Hey, how can we help you as a as a service?" Right, and and then we start using trusted circles because one and you touched on this before. You want to broaden. You want to diversify, but there's many ways to diversify in terms of trusted circles. Right, so I believe in in having you know. Uh, um, you know, a, a marketing company, an expert marketing company to help them, uh, an expert HR company helping them, uh, a tax strategy lawyer helping them to reduce their taxes and everything else. You should be at least 50 in a trusted circle. So no matter what they need, you say he's, he's number 20 on my spreadsheet. Have a look. Okay. I don't want just lip service. I want to physically take someone from $300,000 in revenue to 3 million in revenue. Physically take them there. Okay? And not just yeah. lip service. We have to deliver. Sure. I just don't know why we need to um close ourselves in Manitoba especially we don't have right now any any employees in Manitoba except uh, me being there. Our our employees are actually from Ontario. Okay, so G, uh, we can talk about uh, Toronto. But Toronto is the biggest market in Canada. Yeah, I know. That's why I thought maybe actually smaller markets are better as a because they potentially may be uh, underserviced. Because uh, if you have uh, only so many bookkeeping companies, uh, if one closing, that uh, that leaves huge hole. Yeah. And you know, in Ontario, in, in Toronto, the market is big, but they also have plenty of offering. Right, and and again, don't forget, you know, every seven to ten days, my videos get twenty million views. So when I start really promoting the uh, the bookkeeping business and talking about, about their pain points as a third party endorsement, right, we will start getting more leads. Yeah. Okay. We don't have the infrastructure to do that yet, and that's why we're not doing it. OK, so more detail. I don't want to get into too much detail where we get into analysis paralysis. Let's keep it broad strokes right now. If you're interested, if this makes sense to you, if it makes sense be, uh, for me, a partnership, if it makes sense for you to take on a dealership role and take on a certain part, uh, then have a conversation with your people and we'll have another uh, Zoom call. OK, sounds good. All right. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Phil. We'll time. talk soon. Take care. Sure.